cut my message in half because I know that uh, we will not have time. This morning, I want to ask you a question. How is your confidence level? How is your confidence level? How do you feel in terms of, of faith uh, and to the Lord? You know, when your confidence level is high, you are more able to deal with life, with your life, with whatever comes into your life, with work problems, challenges, and whatever. But unfortunately, we know that confidence is something that can be uh, smashed sometimes through different setbacks and difficulties, uh, expectation not being met. But confidence can grow. And I want to start, today will be part one, and later on I'll do the, the next part. I want to talk about your confidence, and I'm not talking about self-confidence. I want to talk about confidence in the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. How do we get confidence? Where does it come from? How can we uh, learn to rely uh, on the Lord? And I made a little chart on the next slide to just begin to illustration. Uh, you know, when you talk about development, when you talk about growing uh, something, uh, whether it is scientific or spiritual, there are different uh, stages. And I want to use this one and then we will develop it with the scriptures. The first level is a discovery. We have to come in contact with uh, the gospel, like the early knowledge of the, of the, of the gospel, learning facts about uh, Jesus Christ, uh, or maybe someone else is telling us about Jesus or something, or you may come in personal contact with uh, the gospel itself. The second level would be uh, analysis. Uh, now you are uh, beginning to uh, discuss uh, rationalize the truth of the gospel, uh, try to identify with it in experience. Obviously, you, you should be experiencing it because the Holy Spirit is real and he is doing his work when you come in contact with the, the Word of God. So there's, there's a development. You, you start to analyze it and to experience and to understand it. And then the explanation. Uh, you are I think you can go to the next slide. I think something more on that. You've accepted uh, now the, the truth of the gospel because you understood it. You are forming your personal opinion on that. And you are getting excited about it. And you want to tell somebody about w the opinions that you have about it. And you are trying to convince uh, others of that. So you see the first point is, uh, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Like, we don't know who is Jesus. I, you know, maybe before I didn't really care about Jesus. I, I'm not sure if Jesus is God or if he's just a great man. And then the spirit of truth guides us into all truths. And then at the end, the integration, you have accepted Jesus Christ. And now you, you become confident and you bring it into your life. Your life is turned around and you are going to live and stand by the convictions that you have formed by developing your relationship with Jesus Christ through uh, prayer. And the values of the kingdom of God become your own values. Whatever happens, I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus. That's kind of a, a development. So I want to look this morning as an illustration in John chapter 4. Uh, and we will see uh, two groups of, of people and we will kind of apply these uh, principles to, to them. Two groups. The first is the Samaritan woman who meets with uh, Jesus. John chapter 4, verse uh, 10 and 12 this morning. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. See, Jesus is offering something to her. He's offering the gift of God. Now we are bring, he's bringing God to this lady who desperately needs Jesus, whether she is aware of it or not. She has a form of religion. She has respect for God. She understands something uh, in her religion about, about God. She has some opinion. But Jesus offers something more. And he offers living water. And then so she's in the state of discovering. She has an encounter with Jesus Christ. But she doesn't trust Jesus yet. You know, are you greater than our father Jacob? 
In other words, why should I trust you? We already have our opinions. We already have our own belief. Why should I trust you? Are you greater than our father Jacob? Then in verse 13, we continue next slide. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Going a bit deeper, Jesus is explaining that whatever he is offering to her is going to benefit her life. It's, it's living water, it's going to benefit her life, she's going to uh, have something better. So she, you know, like the love of God is there for her and it is something that will well up and lead her, lead her to uh, eternal life. But in verse 15, she says, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. So it seems that at this point she does not really understand the, the concept eternal life, living water, in a spiritual way. Like most people who have not received the Holy Spirit, they cannot understand the things of God. The Bible explained it very clearly. They cannot uh, identify with it. They cannot understand spiritual truths. But they can understand physical or material blessings. Something that will benefit their life. That's why to preach a holistic uh, gospel is often producing a lot of fruit. You help the poor. You do something good for them. Then they will be most likely uh, open to receive more spiritual truth that will come later. So bef before people receive the new life of the Holy Spirit, they can only understand the material things of the world. So I, I, I don't want to come here to, to take water anymore. So give, give me whatever you have to give. It will improve, it will improve my life. So here uh, she is developing a little bit more. John chapter 4 verse 16 and 19. Jesus said to her, go and call your husband and come here. Verse 17, the woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you had five husbands, and the one you're with now uh, is not your husband. Whoa, shocking truth. Okay, who are you, mister? How, how, how do you know that? So the woman says, sir, I perceived that you are a prophet. Oh, now she has moved on into her understanding of Jesus. You see, we come here in the process of analysis, uh, they, they rationalize, they discuss, and she experienced something special at this moment. He's telling me something that nobody knows. This man doesn't know my life, doesn't know my sin, doesn't know my problem, but he is, you know, putting it just before me. It's a supernatural experience. I perceive that you are a prophet. So she experienced something personal. It means something to her. It convinced her that this man there that I'm talking with is a very special man. Verse 24 to 26. Jesus says, God is spirit, because they're talking about God, they're talking about approaching God, serving God, worshiping God. God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain us everything to us. And Jesus said to her, I am the Messiah. Well, so the same step, continue a bit further. She discusses, she argues, and she says to Jesus what she believes, where she is at in her spiritual life at that time. Uh, we, we know something about the Messiah. We know he's coming, and when he will come, he will tell us everything. And Jesus reveals his identity to her. He goes uh, further, and trust is being built at that moment. Verse 28 and 29, the woman left her jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? She has moved a long way from the beginning of that conversation and she is in the explanation stage. She has gained now enough confidence that she has formed an opinion about who this man is. I perceive you are a messiah, uh, the, uh, um, 
I perceive you are a prophet, Jesus declaring I am the Messiah. And then she goes to the villagers and she report, she can report, she can share what she is thinking now with other people. She's excited. Could he be the Messiah? And she is uh, very excited about that. So that's the stage of explanation. She has gained enough confidence to share her opinions with other people. Everybody can do that when you are at that stage. When you have received that uh, assurance of salvation, when you have discovered Jesus Christ and you have trusted in Him, and it's clear, He made it clear, He did something uh, supernatural, special for you. He revealed His identity to you through the Gospel and something happened, you are convinced. You know, this week, uh, Pastor Jennifer and I with uh, Stur, uh, Priscilla, we went to Guangzhou to meet uh, some of a group of pastors of a young lady who went to the English camp. And her, age, her name is Rina, and she was sharing her, her testimony with us. She's a young believer. She comes from Shandong province, but she's been working for HSBC and Guangzhou, and she attends this church. And she says, I'm taking eight days off because I want to go back to my parents' home in Shandong province because I need to share my faith to them. That's exactly what we are talking about. She has come to this place of assurance, of understanding who Jesus is, and she cannot but go back home and tell to her loved ones what Jesus has become uh, to her. Same thing as when Sister Rachel was uh, a few months ago, uh, she was sharing when she went to the Philippines and she led all the extended family to hear the gospel and it was a wonderful uh, testimony. So this Samaritan woman is moving in her faith. But then there's a second group of people, the villagers, the people who heard the testimony of this lady. John chapter 4 verse 39 to 42. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I've ever did. Wow, that's getting excited. This lady barely understands and just starts to move into faith and already she's producing fruit. She leads a whole group in the village to, to come and to believe in Jesus Christ. And here we see how important it is to tell other people of your personal experience and the faith, of your experience, belief in Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? What He has done? Last week, last Sunday afternoon in the EE class, we were talking about how to develop our testimony. This is so important that each one of us, we can verbalize, we can share our testimony to someone. Look what happened in that story, how important telling others it is in the process of gaining confidence. Here, they learn something about Jesus. They don't know Jesus, who He is, but they only learn about Jesus from the testimony of somebody else who has an experience with Jesus Christ, a personal experience. You see, she's not only sharing words. She's not sharing a theory anymore. She is sharing uh, like a belief. She's sharing a belief based on an experience that she's had. Jesus revealed himself to her. I perceive you are a prophet. I am the Messiah. Could he be possibly the Messiah? He told me everything I've ever done in my life. This is a very special person. And they come to believe because of the words of that woman. That's important. That's very important. There's something great happening here. Their confidence is based on the, the experience of one lady, and this is the key. Because the woman had said, he told me everything I did. They believe. That's powerful. Amen? Amen. So many believe. Verse 40, we continue. When they came out to see him, now who is this man, where is he? They begged him to stay in the village, so he stayed for two days. Long enough for many more to hear his message and what? Believe. And believe. So Jesus now personally, individually, is going to spend two days with them. He's going to explain the gospel to them, the message of the kingdom of God, explaining, revealing more of himself to them so that they have more to hear 
and to believe. Verse 42, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us about him, he, did, he told me whatever I did, but because we heard him personally. It becomes a personal experience. It's not a hearsay. It's not based on the testimony of another one. Faith has, it is essential that it comes to that point of a personal encounter, a personal experience, a personal conviction. We have heard him ourselves. Now we know. You see, the theory has become a fact. The philosophical or the spiritual truth has become a reality into my life. Now we believe, now we know. Because we did not hear only from somebody else, but it has become true to ourselves. We heard the words of life. We heard what Jesus has to say. And now we know that He is what? The Savior of the world. They have uh, acknowledged Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The fact. Now they put their confidence. And probably you are like me. But I remember very, very clearly the night I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I opened my heart and I invite Jesus as my personal Savior. I experienced this truth. Now I know. I think I told you many times that story, but uh, I, I, I was going out on a party, but then I, I went to this meeting and I received Jesus that night and I repented and I, I prayed and I became born again. And instead of going to the party as planned, I returned home and my mother thought, wow, something's wrong with my guy. He's, he's, he's too early at home tonight. And then when I walked home, I told my mom, mom, you know what? I'm born again. That's exactly the word that I have used because that's the, the word that I had heard and the, the message. To, I have a new life and I knew it and it was sealed in my heart and it was cleared. Now I know Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. I remember that very, very uh, clearly. There's a, a, a few texts, but I want to illustrate it with another text. Uh, text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. When the great chapter on the resurrection of Jesus Christ preached by Paul. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received. Okay, that's one stage. You, uh, you heard the message that I preached to you, but you responded to that you receive it, you accepted it, and which you stand. What, do, what are we saying now? It has moved to the last, to the last uh, stage, integration, on which you stand. You are living based on that. Your life has changed. The, the values of the kingdom of God you are now implementing. You are living for Jesus Christ. You have moved uh, from hearing the message of the gospel you have received it, and you are now living it out. You're putting it in, into practice. Verse 2, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. By which, so this faith that you have heard, the message of the gospel, is producing the salvation, the, the sanctification, there's a process of divine work in your heart. You are becoming a, a, a godlier person. You, you have received the Holy Spirit. You are being saved. But there is a condition and, and a way here. If you hold fast, and this is part of having confidence, holding fast regardless. You know, our life is not always easy. We don't preach a, a prosperity gospel. Believe in Jesus and you will float two feet from the ground and you, you will be in cloud nine and no, nothing will ever touch you and no trials, no adversity will ever, you will only be living in the bliss and blessed. No, we are not, we don't, we know life is real for every human being whether we are safe or not. But we have Jesus in our life and here it says, if you hold fast, if you remain, if you keep it, if you persevere, 
uh, if you are courageous, if you uh, run the race that is set before you, if you live in a way that is honoring Jesus Christ, if you remember that word and you keep it and you treasure it, that is something you, know, you are moving, you have integrated that message. What is confidence? I have a definition here. And then you can ask yourself and analyze yourself. We're almost through. Full trust. Belief in the powers, the truthfulness, and the reliability of a person or a thing. But here we're talking about a person, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Full trust. Full confidence. I can rely upon. He's completely trustworthy. trustworthy. I know him enough. I have moved in. I've been touched by him. He's real. He's done so much for me. He is faithful to his promise. Is reliable and I believe in his power. You know, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is God. He is, he is the ruler of the supernatural. When you walk with Jesus Christ, everything is possible. Amen? amen. I want to hear a good amen because amen. when you walk with Jesus Christ into your life, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. You know, things who are not possible for men are possible because all things are possible to God. So when you are living your life in the full confidence that you believe in the powers, that means what? You believe in the powers. You believe He can do. You believe he's faithful. You believe he has the ability, the divine power, the supernatural, the miraculous is possible. Everything, there's no limit because God is able. When everything comes crashing on your side, he is more powerful. You know, we are persuaded of that. Uh, he is trustworthy. Trustworthiness is possible only when you have experience. You know, I had a, a second cousin when I was growing up in my village, uh, extended cousin. And when he would say, believe it or not, we knew he was lying. <laughs> it, it, it was just a fact. When he said, believe it or not, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you that, believe it or not, we knew he was lying, you know. So you can only come to a point of tr trustworthiness if you know the person. If you have had the proof that this person is truthful, as if you have some kind of experience and exchange and relationship enough that the truthworthiness of that person has been proven to you, has been tested in all this. So in Jesus Christ, if you want to uh, grow in your confidence, you need to have that. You need to have that. And I want to finish with 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Here the word for confidence is putting your faith in, having full confidence in a person and by implication that you are entrusting your spiritual well-being, your full life to Christ and you commit, you are not afraid to commit your life, your future and your everything. First Peter 1.8 you love him even though you have never seen him. Have you seen Jesus? What does he look like in reality? You don't see? So we have seen movies about Jesus. We've had descriptions of Jesus. We've had holy pictures of Jesus, you know, in history. But we don't know. You know, the, the, the last movie that we've watched, the, the movie that we, we watched Jesus, it was a very nice looking Jesus, wasn't he? Yeah. Very charming, very handsome and all of this. You know, it, it, this, it disturbed me a little bit to have this kind of picture of Jesus because that's not how the Bible describes him, you know? The Bible describes him as a very ordinary looking person. He, what, his, his beauty, what drew, drew people to him was not his physical appearance. You know, if he was looking as an average Jewish people, maybe he had a big nose. You know, we don't know. Uh, probably, and, uh, and probably a beard, you know. And, you know, I, I, I'm a bit disturbed to always see a picture of Jesus, tall, skinny, and looking like a hippie. <laughs> you know, I, I was a hippie before. 
I, 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 I don't want a, a hippie Jesus. Uh, I, I don't need that. I, I came out of that life, so I, I, I don't want that. I want a, a, a man, a, a divine person, a more glorious person, okay? So anyway, I just uh, sideline like this, uh, my opinion on the movie, on the actor. He's a good actor, I mean, and I'm, 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 you know, I was touched in the last scene of the movie. I was going almost to, to show you some scenes of the last part of the movie. You, sh you need to see that, even though he, Jesus looked like I just described. At the end, you know, you come with tears into your eyes when, when you see uh, John on the island of Patmos and he is old and he is miserable, you know, like his life is hard. He's a prisoner, he's on an island, you know, and all this. And then Jesus come to him, I'm the Alpha and the Omega and I'm coming again. And so it's so moving. And then you see this nice looking Jesus, hippie style, raising his hands and you see the light coming through his, his hand like this, like a big, big hole into his hands like, oh. But Jesus is coming again. Amen. And he is trustworthy and he is powerful and we have this full confidence in him and we can be rest assured. So anyway, though you do not see him, you trust him or you believe him or you have full commit, uh, you commit your life, you have full confidence in him because the word used here is to fully put your faith, you, you completely commit your life, you put your trust in Him, and you rejoice with a glorious and inexpressible joy because of what you know of Him and what He has prepared for you, the future that is going to come to you. It's wonderful. You know, we took communion this morning. It's not only like for now. It is announcing the deed of the Lord. It is announcing His return. It is announcing eternity. It is announcing all the promises of God. It is attesting that whatever you read in the Bible is yours. And you can live that life with Jesus Christ because we are moving you know, in our discovery, our faith increase. The more you know Jesus, the more everything is possible. The more you learn lessons, the more you learn how to, you know, rely upon Him. You know, you learn hard lesson. It's not going to be easy what you have to learn. The context of our learning. If I am going to learn how to rely upon the Lord, I need a, a, a set of circumstances. If it is easy, I don't need to rely. I can do it on my own. But when the, the going gets tough, when I come to the end of my resource as a parent, as a, you know, in the workplace or in any spheres of our daily life, when you come to the end of yourself and the challenge before you is too big, where's your, what's your confidence level? That's when we learn to rely upon the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning.